Okay, we're back with him. Still using the same brush, he's still using the same colors. I've decided that I want to color his. And now I'm changing my mind. I was going to do the jacket in green, forest green, and his backpack in red. But I think I'm going to do red here because I want to do just like we did in this guy. I want to show you how I get those lines in there. Show you what I do. So let's do that. Let's let's make this red and let's make this one green. So I'll mix up a little bit of green. Don't need a lot of it because we're not talking about a big backpack. Again, water it down quite a bit. People say 10 to 20 drops. I don't count them. I really got more, more better things to do with my time than count the drops of water. I just add a lot of water to my paint. I'm going to give it a touch of brown and a touch of black. I just want to make that green a little bit darker. Like he's been out camping a lot with that thing. And it looks a little bit dirty. There, that's the color of green I'm looking for. All right. One of the things you'll find when you when you paint, when you go to buy paints, is that you're a lot of times never going to find exactly the color you want. And that's where knowing part of that color wheel, knowing the cool and warm colors, and knowing what thins it down or what lightens it down or what tones it down helps. I don't certainly know all about color theory. I studied a little bit of it. I know enough just enough to get myself in trouble. Most of mine comes from trial and error. Paints are cheap. These, these paints are relatively inexpensive. I don't say cheap because I, I don't want to say cheap. I didn't mean to say cheap, and I apologize to the manufacturers. They're not cheap paints. They're just inexpensive. They're cheap to me is, is a connotation of it's not very good. I don't mean to imply that, and I apologize for somebody who might take offense at that. But they are not expensive. I, these things run anywhere between uh, 99 cents and two bucks, depending on where you buy them. And so your local art store will have them, and they're relatively inexpensive. Okay. Let me stay away from that green just yet. We'll color him red. And we just want to get red. As Chris Hammock says, where red goes. <laughs> and so we're going to put it all over this guy's jacket. We're still working on a, a sort of wet canvas. We got it wet to start with. We haven't dried it out enough, even with all of our playing around with the hair dryer. We haven't dried it out enough to where you can it doesn't have a little bit of wet to the touch. And so we can still worry about flowing, although this is the last thing that's going to go on before we antique it and before we add the lines to it. This is the last color we're putting on this particular part of the painting, part of the carving rather, the, the jacket. So there's nothing else going to go on there. I don't have to worry about it running into something else. So we've got red. Make sure you take care of those little holidays, my wife calls them. Make sure you're getting it where it needs to go and giving him a good overall color. Okay, we're going to let that dry. Remember when we painted the face and we talked about how it was going to fade back into that? And it looks like there's not a whole lot of color between here. Don't worry too much about that, although if you really wanted to add color, you can. We're not going to worry about adding a whole lot of color because by the time we antique it and come back to it with paint sealer and all the stuff that we're going to do to it, you can see how the color will change between here and here. Looks like he's had a little bit of sunburn, and so we can add that into it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the, the paint that I already have. I want, to, I want to color his hair fairly dark, and so I'm going to use that same dark color that I have. If you can reuse color, that's great. But I'm just going to use this on his on his hair. And you know what? I want a slightly smaller brush. Not one that small. And not one as big as what I had. So let me look over here and see what I got. And I've got this one. This one might work. Although I, I don't know how good a paintbrush this is. Anyway, we're going to work on it. Yeah, it'll work. And so we're just painting where hair is. I'm using that dark color that I mixed up with the brown and the, and the black on it 
and then we'll come back and add some highlights to it. Here's where I've got to worry about paint running. You can see how it's time, kind of wants to run down there into the face. I'm going to undercut that, take that out, wipe it, and I'll just be a little bit more careful as I go in there. That's the thing about using these wet paints, wet on wet, is it will run if you're not real careful about it. Running is okay in some spots and others not so much. So we'll be real careful about how that paint runs. Okay, we'll do the mustache. Color that in as well as we can. Hard to get back in here, but you, if you've left some negative space in there, you can get back in there behind it. All right, hair's done. We've got everything painted except for his socks. I pulled out little little desert turquoise. I have a little spot left here on my paint well. I'm gonna to toss some desert turquoise in there. Why desert turquoise? For no reason other than I like color. And this guy just needs a little color. He needs his own little bit of individuality on his on his clothing there. And that was his nod to fashion. He wanted a little bit of color and we're gonna give it to him on his socks. Make sure my brush is cleaned out. And we're just gonna splash some color right in there. It's not very much. It's just enough to be subtle, not enough to be bold. So we're just going to give him a little bit of color on his socks. Just like that. Oh, and again, there we go with the paint running. It's running right in there. I'm going to clean that off. See there? We got that paint off there. You can't even hardly tell it. I say hardly. All right, the last thing we're going to do before we seal them and take care of all the other little details like the lines here and the buttons here, we're going to add a little buttermilk. A friend of mine showed me this trick years ago. Buttermilk is a nice little detail you can add to your paint. What you do is make sure he's dry completely and then use this strong. And I'll show you that in just a minute, but I'm going to, I'm going to hit him with the dryer just to make sure we're completely dry before we start. So in three, two, one, we're going to start with the dryer. Three, two, one. All right, that's gonna be dry enough for what we want. I'm gonna use this little brush that I only use for doing what I'm fixing to do, and that is highlighting. I'm going to use that brush because it's soft enough, but stiff enough to where it rakes across the facets, but doesn't bend and go down into all the little corners. And I just need a little bit. I don't need a whole lot of this paint. In fact, a, little, a bottle of that will last you years if you don't do a lot of carving. Anyway, you want, it, you want to charge your, your brush with that paint and then take most of it off. And what we're going to do is use it to catch the highlights. So if you'll watch at that boot, we're just catching the highlights as we brush it across. We're catching those facets and it helps to make it look a little bit less stark and brand new. 
Okay, we're, we're, we're doing a dry brush technique, keeping it off the skin, but onto everything else. And it's just gonna show what looks like dust. You know what? I just noticed a little red right there. Let's see if we can get that red out of there. All right, we got close enough, so we will be able to cover that up when we do the antiquing. Okay, to do this, you got to have a dry brush, so make sure that brush is dry. Go back in and recharge it. Take it off and brush it across the facets. You can see the little facets here right across the backpack. Alter your stroke so they don't all look like they're going the same way. And all it's doing is picking up the highlights. Doesn't need a whole lot to look that way. But look what it does when you do it across the, the mustache and hair. It really brings that out. It makes it look like the hair is multi-colored and multi-faceted. I like this technique. I use it on every one, almost every one of my curves. I don't say every one. There's some that doesn't lend itself to it. But as you can see, a little bit goes a long way. And it is a technique that just makes your carving pop. I like using it. Okay. And I think we're done painting this fella. What we want to do now is I'll show you what I do. I'm going to hit the, hit the hair dryer. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that off camera. It's 12 minutes. Let me hit the hair dryer off camera, dry it really well. And I'll show you how we add those details and finish the card. See you in the next one.